Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Try to stay with the sensation of the breathing as it comes in, as it goes out. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. Try to find a way of breathing that feels comfortable. We're trying to give the mind a good place to settle down so it can collect itself, gather itself in, and see itself clearly. When the mind can settle in like this with a sense of well-being, then it's easy to see where greed comes in, anger comes in, delusion comes in. And you can do something about it. When the mind is not still, it's running around all over the place, and everything is a blur. It's in this way that you develop a quality called bunya, which is, sometimes is translated as merit, it's better translated as goodness. We're trying to create a good quality in the mind and the heart. Buddhism is all about training what the Buddha called jitta, which means both the heart and the mind. Sometimes we translate it as mental training, and it sounds like if you're going to be smart, book smart, you're going to get ahead. But it also involves qualities of the heart. You have to be generous, you have to be virtuous, realizing that you don't want your actions to harm anybody. And you want to have goodwill for all beings. When you develop these qualities, then you've got a well-developed heart. And we take it, we follow the example of others who've gone before us. Today we're making merit for Lung Lung Mahabuntam, or to give him his full ecclesiastical rank. He was Prat Vinaya Sopun. He was a high-ranking monk in Bangkok. He was a student of John Furong, who was my my teacher. But he wasn't like other monks in Bangkok. He was very frugal, he was very generous, very virtuous. He had the position in what we could of what they call patriotate, which is the monk who is in charge of invitations for others, other monks. And that position is one which it, it, people can take advantage of it, but he never did. He had that position for fifty years, and there were never any legitimate complaints about how he did it. Everybody was treated fairly. In fact, there was one time when someone in a, another monastery, the Patritate there, created a scandal. It, took, it seems that in the monastery there, were, there was a cremation monastery, and the cremations in Thailand are bigger affairs than they are here in America. You invite people, and sometimes you invite them for meals, you invite them for chatting. And so there are the people who make money off of providing the food, providing the drinks, providing other things, the flowers, even providing the music. And this particular monk had arranged to push all the other people who had traditionally had these positions in that monastery, gave them to his relatives. It became a scandal over Bangkok, and one newspaper decided to check out the monasteries in Bangkok that had the famous crematoriums. How much money did the Patritate have in their bank accounts? And they discovered that Lung Lung had the least amount of anybody. He was very proud of that fact, because he was extremely generous, extremely honest. And this is one of the reasons why we, we think of him. He was very generous with us here at the monastery. He used to come twice a year to help with the ceremonies of the Katin, help with the ceremonies for the, creating the candles for the rains retreat. It was always, you might say, had our back. And so we think about the goodness that he's done. And this is one of the reasons why we have commemorations for people who have passed away, is to think about the goodness to encourage us to be good as well. Because if he had been the kind of monk who used his position to gain money, well, what would he have now? The money he would, get, would have gained is not his anymore. All he would have had was the, the karma. And who would want to re remember someone like that? We remember the people who have been good to, good to others, who have shown, and also in their behavior, they have shown good examples. Those are the kind of people we like to remember and encourage us to follow their example. So this, these qualities of goodness don't die out of the world. You look around us and there's so much that's discouraging about the world outside right now. But we realize that we don't have to let that, that discourage us. We can be independently good. Because where does generosity come from? It comes from our own intentions. Virtue comes from our own intentions. Goodwill comes from our own intentions. These are things that we can generate inside, regardless of what the world is doing. We can learn how to make those intentions skillful, so that nobody gets harmed by our thoughts, our words, our deeds. And we make a con positive contribution both to our own true happiness and to the true happiness of others. So when you think about the people who passed away, think about their goodness. And let that be an encouragement that this is why we like to think about them, just because of their goodness.
Some days there'll be people who want to think about us because of our goodness. Make that one of your intentions. That helps keep you on the high road, the road that eventually leads to true happiness. And as the Buddha said, it's good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. It's good all along the way. It's a good path to be on. So we take encouragement from the people who have been on the path ahead of us, and we want to give good examples to the people who come behind us. And this way goodness continues to live throughout the world.